Welcome back. Now, South African Airways has confirmed that the airliner will be resuming its operations in less than a month. And the date that has been set for the first flight is Thursday, the 23rd of September 2021. The national carrier has already started selling tickets as of yesterday, the 26th of August. And it has been a long, difficult journey for SAA due to years of financial difficulty that was caused mainly by mismanagement of funds causing the state-owned entity to be placed under business rescue. Interim Chief Executive uh, Thomas Gokolo previously assured the public that the business rescue process was managed and it was done to uh, clean up and to provide a fresh start for the national carrier. Gokolo joins us now for more on the latest developments around SAA. Mr. Gokolo, thanks for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Sakina, good morning uh, to your viewers, to yourself, and to the loyal customers of uh, SAA. And I think your loyal customers will think, yay, this is a positive uh, move, a positive news uh, for the South African public, even though the initial date for the resumption of operations was August, as per an earlier announcement. Uh, so what caused the delay from then until the September uh, start now? Um, Sakina, um, good morning once more. Uh, like we said when we were projecting our, our restart period, it was always dependent on uh, the COVID environment lockdown restrictions as well. And some of the internal you know, factors like negotiations with pilots as well. And the state of readiness for the entity, as you can imagine, we've been on the ground for quite some time. So we felt that um, you know September will be much more better uh, because um, we are getting into spring and and we're also getting into uh, towards the uh, transport month. And we believe that uh, it is a good time to go and uh, represent SAA on the market. So all these factors contributed to us looking at September as a possible date for restart. So let's just look at the status of uh, things at SAA at the moment. So when SAA takes to the skies, who will own this entity? Currently, out of the business rescue, the entity is still state-owned 100%. Remember, the potential strategic equity partner, uh, they are, we are still busy finalizing the due diligence. As you have seen yesterday, the announcement was made that uh, they are busy with the stage of doing uh, you know, sales purchase agreement. So as it stands, it is owned 100% by the state. And um, this is uh, the first phase of us restarting the airline while we wait for the SEP transaction to be concluded, Sakhi. Mm. So, so that's a bit confusing because if SAA is going to restart its new life, 100% uh, funded once more by the state, uh, what's the point then of having that private equity partner? Remember, when we went out of business rescue, there was um, working capital or operating capital that was left to ensure that uh, we do interim restart. Um, however, this working capital will only carry us as far as short term. The role of a strategic equity partner is still important to ensure that uh, the entity is adequately recapitalized in the medium term and the long term to ensure that uh, there is long term sustainability in the entity. So the reason we are restarting now is to protect our roots. As you can see, we've been out of business for quite some time and competitors have moved into those particular routes. More importantly, to maintain our regulatory license as well. On the other side, also to make sure that we remain relevant to the market as we proceed finalizing the issue of the strategic equity partner. So we are utilizing the uh, working capital that um, the, the SAA came out of it, uh, from a business rescue process. Mm. So when you talk about adequate recapitalization, as per your calculations, how much would you need for that? Look, at this stage, these are sensitive commercial information that uh, will still have to be negotiated. And as we are still also trying to remodel the business and understand it much more better. I'm sure when that time comes, uh, information can be shared. But at this stage, we believe that it's much more commercial sensitive information that we're still working on on the business side of 
Please. But what makes it what makes it sensitive, Mr. Kokolo? Um, I mean, these are numbers that had to be crunched in order for this deal to be concluded. One has to know how much has to be put on the table by each partner. So, what about that is sensitive? Remember that um, this process is still part of a negotiation, and if you have managed. Uh, deal structuring and negotiations such as these, they are always moving parts. As they do due diligence, they understand the business better, they you know, uh, uncover value at certain areas or sometimes value eroded in certain areas as well. So because we are still in the middle of this particular transaction and we're still also sharing more information on the due diligence, I believe this is what makes it sensitive. But but what due diligence? Uh, uh, wasn't Takato, uh, the, uh, the Takato Consortium, uh, the winning bidder here? Uh, were they not awarded that 51% stake, uh, the private equity stake in SAA? Yeah, I remember, Sakina, this is a process that is managed by the Department of Public Enterprise as a shareholder. What we are responsible for is management is to ensure that the process of due diligence um, goes on smoothly by making sure that we provide the supporting evidence, the supporting documentation, we introduce them to the business, we make them understand the business model, and that is our role. Any further communication regarding the structure, the awards of the bidder, those are things that are being handled at the Department of Public Enterprise. Again. Mm. Please bear with me, um, Mr. Kokolo. I'm, I'm, I'm really confused this morning about how things are unfolding. Uh, because in terms of that 51% stake, when you talk about due diligence, what due diligence are you busy with at this stage? Wasn't that done before the award was made? Remember, um, um, for you to get to buy into a bill, Business. You need to come in and understand the business better. You need to understand the commercial side of the business. You need to understand the human right, human resources side of the business, the marketing, all the functions of the business. So when the award as a potential strategic equity partner was then made, uh, the due diligence was something that was supposed to follow or that followed after that. And that announcement was made by the Department of Public Enterprise. So since then, we've been busy with this due diligence where the consortium had to come into the business so that they can understand the business more and be able to determine things like um, the valuation of the business. Is it still operational? Is it still something that they want to get involved in? So the due diligence came subsequent to the announcement of this potential strategic equity partner. So what do you mean by that? Does that mean that they can, at this stage, the Takata Consortium still opt out of this particular process, of this partnership? Our understanding is that um, it is not a, a binding um, um, proposal. And uh, yes, of course, until we've got um, a, a signed share purchase agreement or a signed agreement, there's always an opportunity to opt out of it depending on what they find in the due diligence. But as per the announcement yesterday, you will have understood that they are comfortable with how the due diligence uh, went, and they are busy moving into a stage of looking at the sales purchase agreement, which is quite exciting for us because it moves us a step closer towards concluding this transaction. Okay. Um, uh, needless to say, I think the confusion is written all over my face because um, one would have thought that all of these uh, uh, things that you are telling us now would have already been concluded. This is why the award was made, that Takato would uh, come in as an uh, equity partner at 51 percent and government would uh, uh, have the remaining 49 percent. There was talk about Takato coming in and having to uh, fork out three billion uh, rand and so, so all of those things you say are now still up in the air? Not up in the air. I think uh, the DPE was very clear in terms of the process. In terms of what needed to unfold, they have explained the due diligence process that needed to happen. And like I said earlier, we are finalizing the due diligence. There is an announcement that was made yesterday regarding the sales purchase agreement. And I think we need to give that process time even in the statement it does indicate that some of these things are complex and they can at times take time so we need to allow that process and uh, the, DT, the dpe will provide communication in due time sakina our focus at this stage is to ensure that uh, we relaunch the airline we restart the airline as we have seen that we've published our schedule 
And our schedule, we have taken into consideration the COVID environment in the continent. We have looked at the competition domestically to ensure that uh, we don't start with the routes that will bleed cash into the business. We'll look at the routes that at least will give us uh, operating income. They will be able to to cover their own cost. And that is important for the airline. As I said earlier as well, because the operating capital is thin as well, we need to look after it very carefully and make sure that it goes the extra mile. And that's why we've been very prudent in choosing the routes that we have provided on our schedule as it had opened yesterday. So uh, let's just move to some other components of this, Mr. Hokolo. The last time you were yes. here, we, we, we touched on the subsidiaries. We spoke yes, about Mango, yes, yes. Uh, SA uh, Technical, Air Chefs, all about that. And, and, and I asked you about uh, the business rescue process and, of course, uh, what it meant for those entities. Now, um, National Treasury uh, announced its plan now uh, to fund Mango, uh, which has cash problems, as we know, they've subsequently gone into business rescue themselves. But when National Treasury announced, uh, announced that 2.7 billion rand that would go to Mango, let me ask first, even before Mango entered the business rescue process, was that money transferred to Mango? Was the money transferred to Mango? Oh, no, 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 no. The, the money was not transferred to Mango, all right? Why um, not? The, the money was in the process of being transferred, but when we started the business rescue, it had not been transferred. That's my question, Mr. Hokolo. Why was available? that money not transferred to Mango? A simple answer. From our side, remember, we, we don't handle the process of when the money comes into SAA. Our understanding was that the money was between Treasury and the Department of Public Enterprise. And we were able to then transfer the money to Mango when we got the money. But at that stage, we did not have the money as SAA. So at what point, you say the money was eventually transferred to Mango, at, at which stage? Before or after they went into business rescue? Yes, so what, what happened? was that once we got into business rescue, we appointed a business rescue practitioner. And once the rescue, business rescue practitioner met with the creditors, met with the employees, he was then able to see it and determine and what part of the money can start coming through. And uh, there was a first tranche that was then circulated to money. So this process is now with the business rescue practitioner. And then in terms of further money may be made available to money, will be managed through that particular business rescue process. You see, Mr. Hokolo, all of this is very confusing because we asked the questions at the time when SAA went into business rescue, what about the affiliates? It was just left yeah. to hang. Subsequently, SAA enters business rescue. The process is complete. Now you have Mango being placed under business rescue. But I have a further question regarding this. So Mango being a subsidiary of SAA, then you have the Takatsu Consortium, which has a low-cost airliner of their own in Lyft. How are these two going to live side by side? I'm curious to know and understand what the thinking was at the time of negotiation and restructuring about how that would work. Um, unfortunately, I'm unable to answer that. Remember I said from the beginning, the issue of the consortium and how it would be structured is managed by the department. We are responsible at an operational level to provide support for the due diligence. I am sure the Department of Public Enterprise will make communication in due time how this will all unfold going forward. Uh, fair enough. And, and we'll put those questions to the department as far as they need to answer to it. But at an operational level, uh, Mr. Hokolo, as the chief executive, what was your understanding of how this was meant to unfold operationally? Remember, at this stage, Mango is in business rescue. Mango was flying before it went to business rescue. And as far as we know, Mango is part of our plans at this stage because there's no decision that has been made with the to Mango. No, but Mr. Hokolo, Mr. Hokolo, to be fair, when was Mango placed under business rescue? Let, let me finish explaining. You asked me to explain operationally what we think of Mango, and I'm busy doing that. I am saying Continue. that as far as we know, uh, is we want the business rescue practitioner to look into the affairs of Mango 
and then guide the group as a whole to indicate how can we move forward post the business rescue. And then we'll then be able to make that communication once the business rescue practitioner has consulted with it and looked at the business and the viability of it. And then we can then be able to guide. I think it's a bit premature at this stage to be speculative on how Mango will come out of business rescue. Let's let that process unfold and then get to its conclusion. Except that I didn't. I was simply asking a question. I didn't make any speculation of Mango and its business processes at all. What I was asking you is, at the time when the Takata Consortium was awarded that uh, equity share uh, stake in SAA, Mango was not under business rescue. So surely Mango had to feature in your plans. You needed to take care of Mango and figure out where and how it was going to fit into your operational model. At the same time, the consortium that comes in also has a low-cost airliner uh, that's in direct competition with Mango on its books. So this is what I'm asking. How, what was the thinking operationally in terms of how those two were going to live side by side? And also, Mango was not under business rescue at that time. So it couldn't have been a case of, no, uh, mangoes and business rescue, so we don't have to deal with that at this stage. You needed to take it into cognizance because it wasn't under business rescue. Again, thanks for the question. Remember, we are currently operating in the existing operating model. And as part of the operating model, Mango is a subsidiary of SAA Group. Mango operates on the low-cost airline space, and it continues to do that. And yes, before it went into business rescue, it was operating. And the intention of business rescue is to see how Mango comes out of it again and how it will operate. As it stands, Mango is part of the SAA operating model as a low-cost carrier, and that hasn't changed. So in terms of how it's going to move forward, uh, who should we speak to? At what point should we ask about that in terms of what's going to happen with the, these two low-cost uh, airliners that are now in the same stable, as it were? Yeah, fair question. On our side, once we get out of the business rescue as the SA Group and the Port of Mango, we'll then be able to communicate the outcome of the business rescue. In terms of um, how the consortium will be structured, like I said earlier, we leave that to the Department of Public Enterprise as they are responsible for coordinating that part. I think let's wait for for all these processes to unfold so that uh, better communication can be made. But on the side of the SA group, we will make things clearer on Mango Space once the business rescue process comes to finalization. Um, Mr. Kokolo, you also said that your role was to ensure that the organization is properly capacitated uh, with people who are fit for purpose. So how have the staffing processes been dealt with? Oh, thank you for that question. I think at an executive level, we've got uh, good corporate um, executives that have joined us from an HR functionality point of view, operations as well in finance, and also in the commercial space. What we've been doing in the last three weeks, we've been placing pilots. And it's very important that um, we place pilots um, who are capacitated, who are trained, and indeed, we've got qualified pilots there as well. On the corporate side, uh, out of the BRP, there are some employees that remain with us in the commercial space, in the human resources space as well. And uh, we have been utilizing those as well. And what we are also doing within the organization, we are doing what we call your skills gap audit and understanding where the gaps are still in the business and how we can capacitate it going forward. But where we stand now, now we've got adequate capacity in all functions to be able to restart the airline. So um, one of the other challenges was, of course, the dispute between SAA uh, and SA um, Airways Pilots Association. Uh, how was that matter finalized? And uh, as you are about to resume a flights next month, what sort of um, agreements have you guys come to? Thank you for the question as well. The, the matter was finalized as difficult as it was. We, we managed to come to some level of agreement in terms of um, retrenching some pilots where there was VSPs taken and there was some money paid out as well. We still maintain a relationship with the Pilots Association SAPA because they play a big role 
in SAA, and they will be going forward as well. And in terms of um, how we move forward with SAPA, the pilots um, have concluded um, new employment agreements on new conditions as well, which uh, we believe that this condition allow the airline to you know, to keep the cost base low, allows the airline to be agile and much more flexible, Sakina, going forward. Well, I'll tell you what, we are out of time. We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, but thank you so much for the engagement. SAA's interim CEO, Thomas Hokolo, discussing how the national carrier plans to move forward as it resumes operations next month post the business rescue process. And uh, as you heard there, uh, quite a bit that still needs to be tied up. But uh, you can make up your own mind. Let us know your views at Morning Live SABC.